Good morning. Today we will discuss in which situation which loop is appropriate. While loop, dual loop and for loop. There are three different loops. Which type of loop is known as which type of loop that we will discuss. Which is best in which situation that we will discuss. Then we will learn the different special you can say control statements that is break, continue and return statement. Then we will learn the difference between break and continue and then we will explore how to write the manual driven program using do while and we will also learn that how to write the infinite loop using while and do while and how to write the condition right without how to write the if without any condition. Okay, so let me start with the same. Dear students, you must need to understand that while and for are pre-test loops. It means, it means it first checks the condition. If the condition is fulfilled, then and then it will run. While you can say that the do while loop is post-test loop. It means it once it executes and then it check for the condition. Another point to remember and that is what? That is while and do while we are event controlled loop. So you can say that when condi uh, termination condition is known at that time you can use the while and do while. So while and do while in this particular case termination condition is known in advance. Well, you can say that the for loop is counter controlled loop. So, very simple it is if anybody asks you that which of the following is the counter controlled loop and there are three options given to you for while and do while. So, you can say that the for loop is a counter controlled loop. And suppose the question may be asked, which of the fo following loop are event controlled loop? Check all that apply. And there are so many options given to you, then you can select the while and do while two options. Why? Because both loop are known as a event controlled loop. Which loop is appropriate in which situation? So very simple, for loop is appropriate when one knows in advance that how many times the loop will be executed right so how many times you want to execute the loop that is the counter that you know in the advance at that time you can say for loop is used while and do while loops are used when one knows in advance when the loop should be terminated. So, if you know the termination condition, you can use the while and do while. So, this is all about a loop. Now, suppose if anybody from you asks that, sir, I want to create my own loop. And I don't know the uh, termination condition. That might be a chance. I know the termination condition in the iteration. Right. So I want to first run the loop. I want to write the loop, which is the infinite loop. So how to write infinite loop? So there are different ways to write the infinite loop. Let me mention on the paper first. For example, see. If you want to write a for loop in an infinite way, right? So you can write the for loop like this, that is semicolon, semicolon. So this is the valid for loop. There is no condition of a for and there is no iteration of a for. It means it is an infinite. Now you need to give any condition over here. Whenever you want to write infinite while, then you can write while and you can pass any non-zero value, for example, one. So, if you write while 1, then it will be always true. So, it will execute always. And 
suppose if you are writing do while, then you can also do like this, that is do while one, so it will be infinite. But remember students, whenever you are writing infinite loop, you need, you need a break statement to break the loop. Why? Because you are going in a infinite loop. So whenever you are going in an infinite loop, you need a break statement to break the particular loop. So how to write the infinite loop? Let me uh, give you an example. For example, I have a variable i that value is equal to 1. Now I am simply writing while that is 1. It means it will be infinite loop. Suppose if you write here printf percentage d and if you print here i and suppose if you think that sir I want to write i plus plus over here then definitely your i will be incremented. But this is your infinite loop and as a result you will be able to see that my execution is infinite right now i have only one option either i can press ctrl c to break this loop right but the actual result i am not getting so you can say it is a infinite loop so in which situation you want to break the loop so here you can write simple condition that if that is i equal equal 5 then break so what happens see your i value is 1 is i is 5 no then it will print the i and i will be incremented i will be 2 is 2 equal equal 5 no so it will not break and it will print the 2 3 4 if i is 5 then your loop will be break and after loop here you can print the statement that this is the after loop so your after loop statement will be printed and you will be able to see that the value 5 is not printed over here why because whenever your i is 5 i am breaking the loop so dear students whenever you are writing any infinite loop you must need a break statement in which situation you want to break the loop if you are not writing break statement then it will goes infinite and if it goes infinite then you will not get the proper result how i can write the same program using four suppose if you want to write the same program using four then you can write semicolon semicolon see yeah, if you are writing two times a semicolon over here then it will be infinite there is no condition there is no increment and there is no initialization initialization is already done over here right so what to do in this particular case here you can simply print your value that is percentage d and you can print your i suppose i am writing here i plus plus again what happened my loop will go into infinite loop and whenever my loop goes into infinite i need the break statement to break the loop so how can i break very simple here again you can write the condition if i equal equal for example i am writing 11 then break so what happened if my i is 11 then it will the loop will be break and that is the reason why i am printing here 1 2 10 so you can use the break statement to break the particular loop not only for Suppose if you think that sir I want to use the same thing in a do while then you can do the same thing in a do while also for example do and I am writing here while 1 whenever you write while 1 it means 1 means always true not only 1 see here see students if you are writing any non zero value it means it is a true if you are writing any non zero value it means it is a true for example if I am writing 1 1 1 1 1 Right. Then also it will be true. It will be false if and only if, it will be false if and only if the value is a zero. Right. So my condition is true always and as a result I am getting 1 to 10. But what if I am writing while zero? Right. If you are writing while zero, it means your 
condition will run only once and as a result I am printing here 1. Loop is not break but the condition is false and if the condition is false then after loop statement will be run. It means you just need to understand what it means 0 means false and non-zero means it is true. So in C language, if you are providing any non-zero value, it means the condition is true. And the interesting thing about the do while is what? It will run at least once. But if you have written while zero over here, right? If you have written while zero over here, then what happened? It is a pre-test loop. And as a result, I will not get the one. I will directly get the message that is after loop. It means what? This is the condition is false. And if the condition is false, it will not go into this. But here, if you are passing 100, while 100, so it means it will run. Why? Because 100 is a non-zero value. And whenever you pass any non-zero value over here, the condition will be always true. So in C language, whenever you pass any non-zero value, it consider the it consider it it is a true value, right? And at, as a result, I am getting the output over here. You can use the break statement in loops. You can use the break statement in switch statement also. Whenever you are writing break statement in a switch, you can break the particular case. And you are, uh, whenever you are breaking the case, it means your switch statement will be break. After the that particular case will not be execute any case and your loop will be continue with the next iteration. That is the concept of switch uh, break in a switch statement. What break in a switch statement will do? Simple. It will terminate the switch condition. So, you can use the break in loop as well as you can use the break in a switch statement. Now, not only one. Suppose if you think that, sir, I want to pass here negative value, then you can pass negative also. Negative means also that the condition is true. Why? Because negative value is also a non-zero, right? Here also you can write the expression. For example, if you write that is 11 minus 12. Right. So value will be non-zero and as a result, I will get the result. But if I am writing 11 minus 11, then the value will be zero. And if it is zero, then the condition will be false. If the condition is false, then it will, my cursor will not move into this loop. And as a result, I will get only after loop value. So this is all about a break. Now what is continue? Right. So the difference between break and continue that you should know. What is break? Break is used to terminate the condition. So if anybody asks you that, what is break? So break is the statement. Let me mention over here. Break statement is used in a loop like for while while or you can say we can use in a and in a switch statement also and it is what it is used in a loop or in a switch to terminate to terminate the execution of the loop or switch statement and break statement is very simple. We just need to write a break. So whenever you write break and semicolon, your loop will be break and your switch will be break. Now I want to know that what is and that is continue. And then we will discuss the difference between break and continue. So let me mention over here what is continue. What happens, students? See, this is a loop, right? It is an infinite loop. Suppose if I given some condition over here and if I says that break, then break will not execute rest statement as well as 
as well as my next statement will not be executed as well as another best thing about the loop break is what my loop will be break so another statement of the loop will not be executed right so the iteration will be break but if you instead of break suppose if you are writing continue right so if this is a condition and if you are writing continue then what continue will do continue will simply skip the statement and execute the next iteration while break will do what break will terminate the loop and it will execute the statement after the loop while continue will continue the loop with the next iteration i have a wonderful example for you guys let me give you the same example over here for example suppose if you say is that sir i want to write here that is while one definitely this while one it means it is a infinite loop suppose if i say is that if i equal equal five then break the loop and your after loop statement will be displayed right so if i equal equal 5 then i will simply break so here you can simply run and you can check that the output will display it, that will be 1 2 3 4 and after the loop but instead of break suppose if you are using continue then what continue will do if the value is 5 then it will continue with the loop right so what happened in this particular case it will goes infinite right so i'm just writing here one condition while i is less than 10 so if i is less than 10 then i am just continue with the loop i plus plus here let me initialize i equal to 0 i'm incrementing the value first so it will be 1 if i equal equal 5 then it will continue right and i if i is not equal 5 then it will not continue so what happens see it will print all the value other than 5 why because my loop is over here my value is 0 is 0 is less than 10 yes then your value will be incremented so you are getting 1 is 1 equal equal 5 no then 1 will be printed again it will go up it will be 2 is 2 equal equal 5 no then 2 will be printed 3 4 now my value is 5 is 5 equal equal 5 yes then it will be continue and if it is continue then the next iteration will be running on and this statement will be skipped so whenever this statement is skipped it will not print the 5 over here so this is what the continue is so whenever you are using continue it is very simple see uh, let me mention the thing over here and that is what i'm just incrementing the value right so if the value is equal equal 5 then i'm simply continue so this statement will be skip so continue will do what it will continue with the next iteration and it will skip the printf statement after the continue statement but if it is a break then break will do what break will terminate the condition so your loop will be terminated so whenever it reaches to 5 another iteration will not be executed so break is terminating the loop while while continue is used to continue the next iteration and it's simply skipping the statement after the continue so the statements after the continue will be skipped and it will execute the next iteration this is what the continue is so you can see that the break is used in a loop for example for while do while or we can use in a switch statement to terminate the execution now what is continue so continue is you can say skips the statement after continue and it execute the loop with next iteration 
break. And what is the difference between that is a break and continue? So we all know that break and continue are the two different keywords. In that is, we can say that uh, these are the keywords available in C. So what break will help us? Break help us to make an early exit. So if you want to early exit from the block, then we can use the break statement. So whenever you want to early exit from the block, uh, from any block then you can use the break statement now what is continue in which situation continue will help us so very simple continue will help us in avoiding the remaining statement <clears throat> so the concept is what the remaining statements in current iteration right remaining statement in a current iteration that we can skip so it helps us to avoid the remaining statement in the iteration and continue with the next iteration this is what the continue is but what is the second difference we can use break it can be used in all loops and in switch construct also. So we can use in a switch construct as well as we can use it in a all loops and continue. It can be used only in loop construct. It means you cannot use continue in switch case but break you can use in a switch case also so very simple concept is whenever you have a infinite loop or whenever you want to do any early exit right it helps to make an early exit from the block and that is what the break is well continue is it helps in avoiding the remaining statement in the current iteration and continue with the next iteration. So this is what the difference between break and continue. Now another special control statement is there and that statement is known as a written statement. So what is written? The written type is used in the definition of the function. For example, if you look carefully over here then this is the integer main is a function and I am using here written statement. So written statement is used to written some value right that you can written from the function. So written statement is used to terminate the execution of the function and it returns the values right. So we can simply written uh, the value that function has the definition in which it is mentioned. So, we can simply mention here that the written type is used in the definition of the function. Definition of the function to set its returned value, we can use the written function and the written statement is used to terminate the execution for example let me give you wonderful example over here suppose if you have written that that this is the after loop this is the loop condition now before this i am simply writing here that is written one one and semicolon and i am simply printing the message that before written right so this message is before written. Now you can check. See what happened. It will execute my program and it will print only before written. It means the process written the 11. It means the written value 11 is printed over here. Execution time is this. And this all statements are skipped. Why? Because written statement is used to terminate the function also. 
right? So we can use the written, simply we can write the written, your function definition will be uh, skipped and this, this point will be skipped and it will not be executed again. But if you are not writing written over here, now you can check. Suppose if you are checking now, if you are not writing written, then it will execute the value and you will get the written zero over here. So this is what the written statement is. Whenever you written anything, you, the written value should be based on your function prototype. So if it is an integer, you need to return the integer value. If it is a string character pointer, then you need to in, return the character pointer. If it is a float, then you need to return the floating point value. So here you can write the written value. So this concept is what written type is used in the definition of the function to set the written value and the written statement is used to terminate the execution. Even you can write the condition and based on the condition, you can return the value. One more thing that I want to discuss over here and that is what even you can write the if condition for if even you can write the if condition for the non-zero value. For example, if I am writing if triple one, then printf c is a c, right? Else printf c is interesting. Right. So what will be my output? My output will be C is a C. Why? Because it will execute if condition if it is a non-zero value. But if it is a zero over here, right? If I am passing zero over here, that is if zero, then it will give me a message that is C is interesting. Why? Because the condition will be false. And if the condition is false, then it will execute the else person. One of the interesting thing is what people may ask you like this, if printf, right, here I am writing Sachin Tendulkar. Now what happens, see, if you are writing printf statement inside a if, and if you are executing this, people say that, sir, it will give me error, but it is not an error. The output is Sachin Tandulkar. It means my printf statement is run over here, right? And whenever you run printf statement over here, so it means Sachin Tandulkar will be executed and printf will do what? It will return the number of character that is printed on the console. So it returns me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. It will, it will return the 16 value over here. And if it is a 16, then it will print the C is a C also. And as a result, I will get the output like this. Such in Tandulkar, C is a C, right? But what if I'm not printing inside printf anything, right? And my else having the message that C is very interesting, right? So if you run this, now, the output is C is a very interesting. Why? Because whenever you write the printf statement and printf statement is written nothing, how we can know this, right? See, why printf is written nothing? Because I had not printed any character. So, what printf will do? Printf will return the number of character it is printed, right? So, I am just writing here printf percentage D and my string is double quote. Whenever I execute this, it will print that this is the address. Why it is printing address? Because I am printing percentage D over here, right? So where I can print this value in printf statement? Very simple. You can write another printf over here. You can say this is percentage D and you can enclose within this if condition. And now you can execute this. And you can close this over here. Now, you people will be getting the idea that it is printing the zero. And that is the reason why I'm getting C is a C. Right. So, why it is a C is a C? Because whenever you're writing here, the value that is zero. So, zero will be printed. And if it is a zero, 
then the size of 0 is 1. So if you write here printf again, right, so you will get the clear idea what I am doing over here and you will get the idea that printf percent is d, this is the bracket closed over here. I need another if condition bracket and you can see that I am getting the output that is 0, 1. Why? Because see, whenever you pass printf, this is 0, so your 0 will be printed. Whenever you print 0 over here, so printf, in printf statement, see, if you are writing here printf and if you are printing 0, it means you are printing one character. And if it is a one character and if you are writing here percentage D, then it will print the one, right? So it will print the one and as a result, I am printing the value over here that is one. But before this one, my zero is printed. So zero and one. So zero one, the same over here that is zero one. And as a result, I am getting here C is a C. So the question is, very simple, if there is a no character printed in if and if you are passing printf and if printf has no statement, so the value will be 0 and if it is a 0, then it will print C is very interesting. Now suppose if anybody from you tell me that, sir, if I pass any value. So, it will be my floating point value or double value. For example, if I pass any uh, point value, then it will be double or floating. For example, let me give you here hint. I am writing here float f is equal to 3.14. Now, I am writing here condition. If f equal equal 3.14, then print f I am enjoying. And if the value is not same, it doesn't mean I am not enjoying, it means I am learning, right? So, ever positive, never negative. What happens, see, whenever you write like this, you are comparing 3.14 and 3.14 and it is printing I am learning. You will be surprised why this is printing I am learning. The value of F and value of 3.14 both are same even if I am getting the different value. Why? Because whenever you write any value over here, it will be treated as a double. Directly if you are writing, then it will be treated as a double. Here what happened? Your double value will be casted into float. So f is float. But this 3.14 is a double and that is the reason why both are not same. And I, it is printing me, I am learning. But what if I want to match this? Very simple. Suppose if your variable is pi, right? So I'm just writing here pi. If you write pi again, you will get the same result. That is, I am learning. Now, if you want to match this two, you can write f over here. So if you write here f, if pi equal equal 3.14 f, then it will print I am enjoying. Otherwise, it will print I am learning. Why? Because the, the values should be same. Here 3.14 is float and if you are not writing float over here that is f then it will be treated directly double and that is the reason why the message will come that will be I am learning and right now if you write f over here then it will give me a message that is I am enjoying. So this is what the if condition with the value matching that you can say over here. Can I write directly if 3.14? If I am writing if 3.14, then what will be the output? If you write if 3.14, then you will get I am enjoying. Why? Because any value other than 0, it will be treated as a true. If you are writing 0, then and then it will be false. So it will print you I am learning. So this is all about a if, break, continue, and retain statement. Now, I want to give you a last example of do while. We can use the do while for the menu driven application. Now, suppose if you think that, sir, how we can use the do while? In which situation do while is best? 
So from my opinion, dual is best whenever you want to use the manual driven application. Whenever you want to develop the manual driven application, you can use the dual. For example, I want to do a simple two options, right? So one is to find the factorial and another I want to print the multiplication table, right? So two options I want to do. So I'm simply writing here one four that is find factorial. So you can write slash n over here. This is the one option. Second option that I want to do and that is print multiplication table multiplication table up to 1 to 10 and if user pass 0 then I want to simply exit. So whenever you want the menu driven applications like this from my suggestion you can do what you can simply declare the variable choice to take the input from the user and you can pass this printf statement in do so it will print at least once so you can write it in a do so it will execute at least once here you can write the condition while my choice variable not equal to zero so what happened this loop will be continue until and unless i enter my choice value is zero so here you can write that enter your choice so what is your choice you can get the choice from the user percentage d and percent choice right so until my choice not become zero i want to execute this so you can run, run this particular code and you will be able to see that this particular printf statement will run until and unless i pass zero so it will be continue continue it will be printing the value if I pass 0, then it will be exit. So, this code is running perfectly that you can write in a do while. Now, another thing that you can use the switch case to pass your choice variable. So, whenever you pass choice variable, you can write the case. And for each case, we can break. Now, what break will do? See, whenever you write break, then once the task of case 1 is over, then this switch case will be break, not loop. My switch case will be break. So whenever switch case will be break, it will execute another do while. So another iteration will be there. Another iteration will be there. So I can write the simple case 1, case 2, and I can write case 0 also. If it is a case 0, then I will simply print the message that thank you for visiting my program. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Right. So if user pass case zero, and we already discussed if the case is uh, last, and if you are not writing any default, then no need to write the break. But if it is not last, then you can write break. And here in default, we can pass any message that please provide option either one, two, or zero. So in default, you can write the message please provide one, two, or zero. So what happens? See, if I'm passing one over here, then it will simply print the message that is a uh, that is fine factorial print multiplication table and zero for exit. So one, two, it will continue. But if I pass three, then it says me that please provide the appropriate option. But if I pass zero, then it gives me a message. Thank you for visiting my program. Have a nice day and bye bye. So the concept is very simple. You can write here slash n so you will get the proper result. Here also you can pass this lesson. Here also you can pass this lesson. Now, if it is a case one, then I want to find the factorial. So I will ask to the user that enter any number to find the factorial. So we can just get the number from the user, percentage D and percent number. 
So I'm just declaring a variable here that is number and factorial is equal to one. So what we can do over here for i equal to one, i less than or equal to number, i plus plus. And for this, you can simply run fact multiply is equal to i. And we all know we need to declare the variable that will be i. So after this four, you can simply print the message factorial of percentage b equal to percentage d. So number and your factorial variable you can print over here. Now you can simply run and you can check it is working properly or not. If I pass one, it will ask the number five. So factorial of five equal to 120. Now again one factorial of four is equal to now I'm getting the value that is different. Why? Because what I need to do whenever I run this every time I need to write fact equal to one because if it is a continue with the case then I should initialize the thing right now you can run this particular thing and you can check one five it is 120 one four then it will be 24 one three then it will be six one seven then it will be 5040 but if I pass two then no multiplication table what to do very simple you can write the code over here in case 2 for i equal 1. I want to print up to 10. So I'm writing i equal to 1 to 10. Now I want to print the multiplication table that is 1 into 1 that will be out will, put, will be 1. So 1 1's are 1, 1 2's are 2 that I want to print. So you can write here j equal to 1, j less than or equal to 10 and j plus plus. Now I am simply writing here printf and that is percentage b. If I am writing 5d then 5 digit will be printed. i into z I am printing over here. And now you can simply print the slash and so you will get the proper result over here. But I need to declare the variable and that will be j. So I need to declare the variable j you will be able to see that it will asking me to the two option one for find factorial six factorial is 720 two from two for multiplication table and if you maximize the screen then you will be able to see that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and one two hundred it prints right two ones are two two twos are four two threes are six so twos Threes, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, everything they are printing over here. So this is the way you can do this. But if you pass zero, then it will be simply exit from the program. So you can use the do while for the menu driven program. You can use the switch case inside the do. Even in case you can write the loop and even you can write the nested loop if you go deeply then you can understand i have a do inside i have a switch inside the case i have a nested for loop so that's it from my side